Yeah, thank you, Pat Bergwin, for your informative uh, and good presentation. Uh, and I want to congratulate Fjarðabyggð on the achievement they have made. Uh, next, we go to Alaska. Uh, and uh, I want to warn the speakers uh, since time is running fast, not to exceed 10 minutes of the presentations, and uh, pre preferably be a little bit shorter than 10 minutes, although we will be running until noon. Uh, but uh, let me next uh, introduce uh, uh, our uh, good speaker, um, uh, Mr. Frank Pogiak from Invalid Game Council. Mr. Pogiak, please. Once again, uh, I'd like to thank your organizers for uh, giving me a chance to speak to you today. Uh, before I begin, I would like to provide some background on the Inuvialuit Settlement Region. For those of you that are not familiar with the Inuvialuit Settlement Region, is I have a couple of maps. The map, the map on the left shows the Inuvialuit Settlement. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to me this morning. To you this morning, I would like to speak briefly about how the Inuvialuit play, played a pivotal role in addressing concerns and questions regarding the future plans for oil and gas development in the region. Our land claim, the Inuvialuit Final Agreement, or IFA, was settled between the Inuvialuit and the Government of Canada in 1984 after 10 years of negotiations. It is a very powerful agreement, and through the management structures and research process that it has established, it has enabled the Inuvialuit to develop an integrated wildlife management system and a wide range of conservation options. They are the three, these are the three guiding principles of the Inuvialuit Final Agreement as outlined in this slide. The third principle is to protect and preserve the Arctic, wildlife environment, and biological productivity. I don't know if I could get this thing to work here. I think some of the slides are. I must have did something wrong. <clears throat> Under the IFA, the boards in the middle of this diagram was established to meet the third principle. One of the boards created was the Invalid Game Council, or IGC, which represent the collective in a valid interest in all matters relating to wildlife. This board is composed solely of inevaluate beneficiaries. I have the pleasure of sitting as chair on this board. One of the responsibilities that the Invalid Game Council has is to advise the territorial and federal governments on issues affecting wildlife, including policy, legislation, regulation, and administration conservation, research, and man management. The Inuvialuit Game Council has taken a leadership role in pushing for the support of a regional environmental assessment in anticipation of future oil and gas development. I hope it works. Oh, there, there you go. In June, of 2004, the Invalid Game Council expressed concerns regarding Government of Canada's lack of 
preparedness for offshore oil and gas development in the Beaufort Sea. In 2005, the Government of Canada committed funds over two years to develop at Strategic Regional Plan of Action for the Beaufort. By April 2008, the Beaufort Sea Strategic Regional Plan of Action, or BSTRIPA, was finalized and provided recommend recommendations as on aspects of anticipated exploration activity. A list of recommendations was developed by the steering committee and the ISR communities to address key concerns. A workshop was held with the Inivali and industry participants to scope out the next steps. There was general consensus that a regional environmental assessment for the Beaufort Sea was the logical next step. The Beaufort Regional Assessment, Environmental Assessment, or BRIA, was seen as a delivery mechanism to implement the major majority of the Bristripa recommendations. The IGC formally endorsed BRIA by resolution in April 2009. Initially, the Canadian government didn't support implementing or funding BRIA. Then in April 10, 2010, the Macondo blowout happened in the Gulf of Mexico. This unfortunate and tragic event brought to light the need for an informed strategy to deal with future oil and gas development in the Canadian Beaufort. On August 10, 2010, the Government of Canada announced the BRIA program and committed $21.8 million over five years to fund the delivery of a targeted science program. So what is BRIA? BRIA is an ecosystem-based, regionally focused assessment of key environmental, social, econo economic, and cultural issues associated with oil and gas development activities in the Beaufort Sea. BRIA will help ensure that governments in Evaluate and industry are better prepared for oil and gas exploration and development in the offshore by filling regional information and data gaps related to offshore oil and gas activities <clears throat> and supporting effective and efficient regulatory decisions making by providing the necessary scientific and social economic information to all stakeholders. The Inibel continued to be involved in BRIA on many levels of its governance. This gut diagram is the governance structure of BRIA. <clears throat> there is an evaluate representatives participating on the National Executive Committee, Steering Committee, Research Advisory Committee, and various working groups. I myself am part of the National Executive Committee and the Steering Committee. There has been community involvement to provide input on how BRIA should be designed and implemented. Some of the ways that Inuvialuit Settlement Region communities provide their input is through BRIA community tours, which go to all six of the Inuvialuit Settlement Region communities to get their input on items like research priorities and provide information back to the communities. BRIA workshops on topics like climate change and its effects on oil and gas development, oil spill response training workshop, and the BRIA results workshop where researchers that received BRIA funding reported results to the, of their work back to the community members and the Invalid Game Council. The Invalid Game Council directors have been directly involved in net environmental benefit analysis workshops to provide input and traditional knowledge on and valid components and oil and gas response scenarios. In 
In conclusion, the Invalid Game Council has always been concerned about the potential, potential for major ecological impacts from offshore oil and gas development. The IGC saw the need for all stakeholders to be more prepared in the event that industry once again wanted to develop oil and gas resources in the Beaufort Sea and took steps to address this. On behalf of the Invalid Game Council, or on behalf of the Invalid, I am glad that this initiative is receiving support and we feel it will con contribute to the protection of the Arctic marine environment that we continue to depend on for our cultural survival. The IGC reaffirms its commitment to BREA and continues to be meaningfully involved as it progresses to a conclusion. However, the Invalid Game Council saw BREA as a long-term program of a scale of maybe 20 to 25 years, not just a five-year exercise. As the BREA program comes to its final two years, it appears, it, it, it is apparent that there is still a lot of research and planning that needs to happen in order to be prepared for this coming wave of offshore oil and gas development. There is also a need for capacity building and equipment on the regional and local level to deal with oil spill response. We continue to push for these needs to be met. Uh, I'd like to thank you for your time and attention. I look forward to this morning's discussions. Thank you very much.